it shook me, eh? I'm just carrying on a bit. <laughs> You're an animal. watching us on YouTube or listening to us on your favorite podcast platform. Welcome back to the Talk Hub Podcast. Yo, podcast number 20, what's up? Pretty sure it's number 20. We'll go with that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. We're going to have to stop counting at some point. Yeah, probably. You're dead right. Yeah. It's a uh, wintry night. It's been a bit wet, a bit cold. Yeah, hopefully the rain doesn't come in and screw our audio up. Yeah, it was looking a bit dicey there before, but I think the radar's, radar is looking okay. What's going on, bud? I'll tell you what, the rain has been nice because now it's not super duper dusty out there. We managed to get the uh, young fellas out on the dirt squirters. Yes, it's that season. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. And you can sit outside around a fire. That's also just one of life's little, you know, it's just the simple pleasures. It's about the only time I want to be outside. Being skinny <laughs> like me, I fucking, I'm, really, I'm not a massive fan of winter. But if there's warmth around, like yeah, a fire. I'll get around there. Yeah. Either that or drink and jump, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, wicked. I, um, been out and about in the D-Max, mate. Been, uh, making use out of the little fit out she's got now. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, we've sort of done the holiday chat before, but I've been out camping, uh, did a bit of a boys' trip, went up um, plantation areas, somewhere nice and quiet and cold and foggy, <laughs> lit a fire, shooting guns and whatever. Tell you what, same thing. It's the simple pleasures of just being able to flick those lights on in the canopy, reach into the fridge, like, Super easy access for everything. Really makes me happy that I've done it. Hard work paid off. In yeah, <laughs> yeah. And look, there's still plenty more that you could do as well, putting drawers and this and that and everything else. But just being able to be easily organized, you've got access to water, you know, like all that there, done. Super, super happy. Um, you guys obviously aren't. Didn't watch much of the videos. <laughs> Fuck the D-Max series. Yeah, that's it. Well, look, truth be told, we knew from the get-go that that series would probably tank, right? We were pretty confident that uh, a lot of you guys would be less enthusiastic about that, being that it's not what we normally do. However, we did think that maybe it would break us into a new audience, but obviously not. This is where YouTube just totally typecasts what you do, I feel. It's like, right... Your click-through rate's gone down because your normal audience has seen the thumbnail and gone, ah, four drive, eh. And so they've just thrown the video in the bin. Wuss. Because there was, um, just as a bit of a, a content creator chat for a second, but as a bit of a unplanned experiment, I uploaded the 12-volt video of the D-Max on the same day as another Perth content creator who did a 12 volt video on his D-Max. And in a 24 hour period, I think our video got something like 550 views and he's got nearly 10,000. He's got a lot more subscribers than we do and he does a fucking epic job of what he does as well. Like hats off to him down at Explorebound if, if anyone's uh, interested, have a look. But um, it was just an interesting look we're like very similar geolocation uploaded on the same day. The videos are obviously different. We've got different editing styles and whatever, but content in the video is almost identical. And to see such a great disparity between the two, it was interesting. Yeah. But then we upload a video of me selling my ute <laughs> and that gets double the views of the entire DMAX series put together 
in 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so it's an, it's an interesting thing. It's a fickle beast, YouTube. That's why you just don't care. No, that's right. I don't care. Like yeah. I say, it was I just... I definitely don't care. It was just an <laughs> interesting observation, I guess, just as to how how it works for some people you yeah. know what i mean like it's yeah the algorithm's just fucking that unpredictable yeah well they're not going to push your video if it's not getting the clicks or whatever they're going to push that same person a different video that's... but you'd think that they would then put it in front of the eyes of the people who are watching similar stuff but not really like it just put it out in front of our audience who clearly weren't that interested in it which is fine i'm not holding that against you guys don't act like i'm you know running you down i don't care if you watch it or not that's fine thank you for all your support though and um yeah i don't know it was just an interesting observation from a creator's point of view Hmm. that's all right we've moved on from that now anyway yeah d-max is done Done for now there's a couple of things that i'd still want to do with it i think i'd uh, maybe mentioned in the last video i do want to upgrade that battery to a lithium um just because you're going to get far more capacity out of it and the amperage discharge as well so i've got a um a 240 volt inverter to put in the canopy but obviously if i'm running like an air fryer or something that's going to draw a whole bunch of amps so need something that's got a really good amp discharge rating so that's why i'd like to do that um also fit the inverter so that we can use that for charging the laptop or charging milwaukee batteries or whatever while we're out and about doing our thing um also a coffee machine i'm sure you won't object to that no i won't complain (laughs) um and then i've got to decide whether or not i'm going to put a tent on top of the canopy because i do want to put a solar panel on it um but if I'm going to put a rooftop tent on there, then I'm going to wait until I get that before I do the solar panel. But, so that's something I've got to decide. But anyway, that's uh, that's the D-Max. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Enjoyed it, though. I mean, like I say, enjoying using it. And I think we'll get, um, you know, good dividends out of it moving on. Yeah. You know, like as time goes on. So, however... I guess we just uh, stop skirting the elephant in the room. Should we just move on to today's hot topic? Sure. This week's hot topic. That's hot. It's probably no surprise that uh, the buzz, I guess, around the channel at the moment is the sale of uh, my beloved VSU. I've got to say, as silly as it sounds... It hit me harder than I thought it would. Yeah? Yep. I know, you know, the the sale came at a good time and, you know, like it was, as as far as situations go, it couldn't be a better situation. It's going to the right home at the right time. It's going to give me, you know, the, some funds to put into this project. And I don't know. It was the day of... I felt like I was all right. Um, like Jacob came, did the handover. He left with the car. Um, obviously sort of felt the, I guess, the normal remorse that you'd have when your car drives down the road with someone else. But then the next day, that was when I sort of felt sad. Like actually sad yeah, right. that it was gone. Um I feel it's been, you know, a bit longer now, obviously, and I'm feeling a bit better about the situation. I'm sort of starting to do some research on um, parts that I'm going to purchase for the VH and and ways on making that move forward. Um, But it's still, I don't know, it still sort of weighs on my mind a little bit, which is surprising. That's because you haven't bought anything for the VH yet and you haven't worked (laughs) that way. No. But I can't just go out spending straight away. I've got to be sort of smart with this because I... No, I just mean like once you start working on it and there's a bit, there's like you've got a bit of a vision of, all right, yeah, this is what we're doing and this is where we're moving and then you can get excited about that. 
This is the first time in my life that I haven't had like a running registered streetcar in the fleet. It's like something that I can just jump in, go to a cars and coffee or, you know, whatever. Mm. I've always had something that was sort of mildly modified and, you know, doing my thing that way. Um, and this is the first time that I haven't had it. It's just a weird feeling. You best fucking hurry up your hole then and you'll be right. <laughs> well, I can I'm hurry. Not, you, I don't know if you've noticed this, but you're not getting any sympathy. No, me, no, no, no. Well, so truth be told, when the offer came through, I was talking to Kurt because, you know, we talk all the time. Yeah. I tell you everything and I was just like yeah I had an offer on the U yada 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 we're having a bit of a chat and you're just like well I hope you broke his arm off and snatched the money let's let's get that SLE happening brother and uh I, I said it in different words but it was more or less that was that's I that was the vibe yeah <laughs> and I think I might have said, you're a fucking idiot if you don't make yeah, that deal. Possibly. that's a good deal. It was a good deal. For yeah. everyone. I don't think it was, um, you know, groundbreaking money or anything. No, it's, no, it was, a, it was a good deal. Yeah. Like you said, it was a good deal for the right person at the right time. Yeah. That's what I mean. It was just a good deal yeah. all around. So I took a week, I think it was, or maybe just over a week to think about it because I just really wanted to make sure that I was going to... Um, make a, a sound decision that I wasn't going to regret, essentially. And mm. it was like, obviously, I'm going to be sad that it's not here or, you know, going to feel a little bit bummed that I'm selling it when I probably don't need to, if that makes sense. I'll say that in inverted commas. I don't need to. Um, but I think you said at the time as well, you're like, look, if selling the U now isn't going to really accelerate the progress of the SLE, then the SLE just won't get done. And you were probably right. I think you said, you were like, oh, that's like, it's not going to do that much for it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, if that ain't going to do nothing for it, then keeping it isn't, it's, you know, nothing's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's going to do anything for it. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. But, you know, the more I thought about it, I I won't harp on about it because I said it in the video as well, but... The car just sits here a hell of a lot of the time. Can't put two kids in it, which means that I've got days off. You know, we've got days off where we can go and do some things and whatever, and the car just sits here. I don't use it because I can't put the kids in it. Whereas I do have four doors and five seats in this car, the SLE, and um, I think I'll get far more use out of it. So it's something that um, now I've got to be smart on how I move forward because although I do have this cash injection, it's not going to take me to the finish line. No, no way. Um, as much as I'd like to think it would, but it's not going to take me to the finish line. So we've got to come up with a plan of, I don't want to buy things that are just going to sit on the shelf for ages because I've got to wait until I've done something else. So this is where it would be really handy to have a project manager, <laughs> someone that sort of built... <laughs> More, a lot more cars than we have that could sort of be like, this is the order that you should do it in, bang, bang, bang. And then uh, I could make those purchases ac- accordingly. Um, but yeah, I we think just, you know what you need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got to work that out as we go. Yeah. And I think... I you think know, you just got to get out of the mindset of that's the lot, like that bit of money is all you've got. Like obviously you've it's got not. more money. So you yeah. just all you need to do is you need to think where you need to start and you need to buy it. Mm. And shit that's going to have a lead time, get that on the move. Yeah. And yeah go from there really yeah and then have i think a good thing would be to have a bit of money sitting there for if like a good deal pops up on something that yeah would be nice to have you know that's a deal that yeah like lose, set, losing money if you walk away from like a set of billet wheels or something yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so it's um it's exciting times it's kind of bittersweet but it is exciting times i'm super stoked for um Jacob and his family, though, to be able to give, you know, part of their father back to him as well. It's sort of, it felt really wholesome. Um, how did you feel when you sold the ute to me? You oh, didn't you didn't have any feeling for it, did you? Uh, I mean, I did. It was yeah. back when I had it. I was, I bought it when I was 18. So that car back when I was 18 was a lot cooler than the, than the car it is now. You know what I mean? Yeah. In, a, in a sort of... I guess what was in a local status sort of sense. Like yeah. it was pretty cool to have something like that back then. Mm. But 
the same reason. It sort of just sat there, got dirty, and I've, you know, I always knew I wanted to do bits and pieces with the VR, which I'm yeah. still working on. But yeah. like it's just been a distraction and that you was kind of a little bit like that for you too, really in a way. Like it was, yeah. You weren't and it was the same with the Malu I had, which is that's probably the last distraction I've had. I don't think I've had anything else since then was yeah, the last V S Malu I had and I got rid of that for the exact same reason. I was like, this is cool and everything but it's not how I want it and the money I need to spend to get it mm. where I want is needs to be spent on the other car that I'm definitely never ever getting rid of. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because we sort obviously of... Obviously, if you've got the time, if you've got the the money and the mm. time and the room, you you wouldn't have to worry about getting rid of anything. No. But when your space especially is is bad for both of us, yeah. we really need to up, upgrade where we're, where we're living and the sheds and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, you can only do so much with the space and time and money that you have yeah. at this particular point in your life. Yeah, because we sort of, often we flirted with the idea of, all right, let's, you know, maybe put a cam and a proper fuel system and maybe see what we can, you know, put an LSECU in the ute or something and see if we can tune it a bit better and, and sort of see what we can really do with that combo. But at the same time, any money that was spent on that car was literally taken straight out of the mouth of the SLE project. And even when um, push the head gasket and getting it repaired in time to go to motivation, I think by the time you add up all the parts, obviously there's no labor, we did the labor ourselves, but all the parts and just getting the heads machine, that was probably two grand mm. by the time that was done. Cause you know, you, you buy the ARP bolts instead of, stock bolts and you get a new set of ignition leads which means oh, i'll get a new dizzy cap and before you know it it snowballs just a distraction yeah that's yeah. all it is so there's no distraction well look there's plenty of distractions we've still got the wagon to finish and we've got this malu project that we're kicking off with soon and it's um you know there's still plenty of hours that need to be dedicated to other projects but yeah um at least within my own fleet there's no distractions but um, yeah, it's all about just planning, planning the build. That's probably not a bad little topic to cover actually because we've kind of crossed this bridge a little bit with the Malou. You guys haven't seen any content on it yet. We mentioned it in the last podcast. Um, but things can evolve, right? They always do. Yeah. They always snowball. Yeah. <coughs> so when... <coughs> Excuse me. We've sort of discussed between ourselves in recent times when you're planning a build and you're buying equipment i think we've made mention before you'd say things like buy your efi last because that technology moves so fast that if you buy it say now and your car's still 12 months down the road it's going to be outdated um but that isn't the only sort of trap you can fall into you can buy things that like i'm saying with me buy things that'll sit on the shelf until you've done xyz but because the previous tasks have escalated somewhat now the stuff that you've bought is no longer fit for task what um sort of things would you say would be the parts that you'd leave until later or what sort of thought process should you go through when you're planning a, a build from scratch i think and I'm just using my own self. Yeah. I've got the longest project in history and it's still going, <laughs> so I'm going for the world record. But <laughs> yeah. I think just having a clear um, goal or end product and being, Expectation. being um, sort of realistic and trying not to get too caught up on what you see other people doing because our egos will get hold of you and you'll see someone do something sick and you'll be like, oh, maybe I want to... Maybe I want to do that now or I want to do something better than that or you'll get a new idea. So you, it's it's hard to, it is hard to stick to a, a plan. But yeah, I think really sticking with a theme and yeah. a plan and sort of a, an ultimate goal and really sticking to it rather than shooting high, which a lot of us do. You shoot yeah. high at the start and then realize maybe this isn't really, yeah, the might run out of funds or don't have the funds to complete it to the the standard that it needs to to match the first lot of bits that you've bought or whatever and you yeah. end up with a mismatch combo is it 
Better to shoot higher at the start, though, than shooting low and then finding that you've bought a whole bunch of stuff that no longer works. It depends what sort of person you are, Yeah, honestly. Really. Yeah. Like, we can't really say right or wrong. No. Some people like to just get shit done quick and we'll either revisit it later or just deal with it. It sort of just depends what sort of person you are. Yeah. And same thing again, what your what your goal is with the project because sometimes there's projects out there you want to spend as little as you can. I want to have as much fun as I can with as little amount of money. I wish I was like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so different. I mean, you can get different and the same person can have two different projects on two different ends of the scale, you know. You need to yeah. watch someone like... Um, like Cletus's channel and see some of the stuff that they do. They do the most ratchet shit going and then they also have some of the best stuff money can buy. You know? mm. And you can't say that they have more fun with one one end of the spectrum than the other. So I think for me personally, it's not even got to do with components and money or time. It's just, I think having a clear theme of a car is what makes the most mm. sense because you can have the best parts ever. Yeah. But if you've got like, I don't know, Taste is a personal thing, obviously, but you, you've seen cars out there where they've got really good parts, but it's just put together poorly and, and maybe mismatched and it just, you know, you could have had something that worked a little better for the same amount of effort or less effort and money. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. But having a clear goal and having a clear understanding of either how fast you want to be or how neat you want it to be Yeah. and just being like realistic so we get a lot of you guys jumping in via email, particularly this sort of question comes up where people want recommendations on um, what sort of engine they should build or, what, yeah. you know, like things, you know. And it's usually Holden VA specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my answer to that is if you're asking whether you should LS or Holden it, you're going to LS it. Yeah. If you're a Holden guy and you want like, you want cammed, like you want sort of good, if you're not going to be happy with like 350 to yeah. sort of high 300 horsepower, say 400, if you're not going to be happy with that and you're not a Holden diehard, you're going LS. Whether yeah. you're going to either do it halfway through your build or not, like you're kidding yourself. If you're, yeah. going to, if you're asking yourself the question whether you should go Holden or LS, go LS. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, it's the, it's honestly that easy, don't you yeah. think? Because if you're considering, like, say, you're, just, oh, I was thinking about putting a six liter or an LS three in. But I don't know, I saw your guys' video and I really like the idea of doing a Holden V8. Dude, you're in for a world of heartache. You know, just just ask us. Yeah. We'll tell you. <laughs> because, like you say, well, if, at, if at you that, want end, 450 yeah. wheel, if you want 450 wheel horsepower aspirated, which you could do quite easily with a 6 litre. Or a S6 yeah, two or, or with a manual. But if yeah, you want to do yeah, that whatever. with a Holden V8, that's like minimum thirty thousand dollar engine in today's money i reckon unless you just really depends unless yeah. you're really handy and you can do a lot of it yourself. and you're not going to be asking questions if that's the case exactly yeah so if you're asking those sorts of questions yeah. yeah and yeah you've just got to be realistic with how much if you don't want to spend the money basically the end of the day because a lot of people <laughs> say oh you know what do i need a budget for for this sort of project At the end of the day like you said a little bit earlier you're horsepower goal or your et goal or depending on what your application is if it's if it's a tarmac rally car or whatever you know set that goal first because that's going to dictate just about everything it's going to dictate how much horsepower you need it's going to dictate what sort of power management you need and what sort of um suspension and, and whatever you're going to need to to get it happening and all that shit costs money so once you've figured out and locked down and you're unwavering on that horsepower or time goal, yeah. that's going to decide what the rest of it yeah, ends yeah. up Yeah, if there's a budget there, you definitely want to sort of put it into a whole package. There's no point having a 700 horsepower engine and then running out of money and you can only, you know, put a shitty transmission in there and, and you know, you're waiting around forever to get the, a decent properly made stall and you're... You know, you can't put a decent nine inch in it or whatever, you know, like whatever it may be. You can't afford the fuel system you need for the engine. I feel like that's something that gets greatly overlooked is fuel things system. like the fuel system or um, even putting something like a trans cooler in these days. If you're going to use like braided line and stuff, that's like an 
exercise at best. Yeah, you definitely. Um, if you're not doing it all, that's not that we do it all the time. No. We do it, you know, a little bit. Um, things like speed flow and uh, fuel systems, and mm-hmm. it's all the little trinkets. You've got to set aside a good amount of money, and it's super important. Yeah, it's more important than the big parts. Yeah, because you can burn up the big parts quick, smart. Yeah, um, that's why I'm. Yeah, that billet rotating assembly ain't gonna survive if you haven't spent the money on your fuel system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last thing you want to do is end up at the track or the dyno and running out of fuel system. Yeah, you know. And I think it's because you sort of got me thinking down the path of when a project starts and I've, I hope we don't feel like we're like um, trying to preach to you either because we're not the messiahs or anything like that. No, shit But no. We are not you, professionals well, and our opinion should be taken with a grain of salt. However... You do get... When you start a project, you get super caught up on all the sexy shit, don't you? That's what I'm just... I like, still do now. I know. PRI comes around and then you get all the yeah. brands dropping all the gangster shit. But it's shit always and... easy when you start a project to buy this really awesome turbo kit or whatever mm. it is. This sick manifold or whatever. You start there and then it's like something that's like really not that sexy like a fuel pump or... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. And it's like... Or, you know, people get like the AFI stuff and they'll ask questions and buy like this really wicked air fire but then they're putting it on like a, a fucking engine that's like on a stock five liter or whatever for example you yeah know? um yeah you yeah, try not to get caught that's it, just try not to get too caught up on the sexy shit and i'm the worst for it because i've bought shit for my engine that i'll never fully utilize yeah um and i've wasted a lot of money on bits that you've got a 1200 horsepower fuel system for a 400 horsepower combo yeah that might do <laughs> 800 maybe one day yeah i think um another really good tip that i've sort of come to realize in time is if you're going to use trade so if you are someone that does need trades to help with your project consult them before buying anything yeah because there is nothing worse than buying this gangster block and you're thinking yep i've got this aftermarket block that's going to be great i'm going to use this and that and everything else and then you go to your machinist or your engine builder and they go nah i don't like those and then what are you going to do with it you know yeah. you've got to go with their recommendation otherwise they're probably not going to help you yeah we, t- this goes we did for- touch on that last podcast didn't we with the afi stuff and possibly yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah we did because that was when nick um sort of had a bit of a change of tune with the malu project when we went from the how tech and now and now we've gone gone to a holly yeah. um program basically yeah so you know you're not always going to switch it up like that so no. i've seen in injected five liter that that joint's gone cold the last couple of years which is not necessarily a bad thing but someone the other day oh has anyone put a and i hope i'm not putting any names out there because i don't even remember but you know <laughs> oh has anyone has anyone put fuel tech on a holden before and I'd, every time someone asks an AFI thing, I'll just put my two cents in, which is ask the guy that's tuning it what box he wants. And he, get, he replies back and he's like, thanks for answering my question, dude. I'm like, there's too many people in this yeah. world that want to just fucking circle jerk and like ask a heap of random cunts on the internet what box they use. Who gives a fuck what box they use? Honestly, who cares? Yeah. Unless you're using their tuner, it doesn't matter. Yeah, unless you're going to start dragging your car all around the countryside trying to find someone. There might not even be anyone locally in your area that knows how to use it or, or cares to use it. Yeah. So, and... If five liters in particular, they're the most basic engine in the world. Like, you don't need anything flash. No. They run off like 90s stock computers just fine for the most part when they're stockish. <laughs> yeah. So, they got one coil and yeah. a dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're on injected 5 0 asking about boxes, you're probably not going to need the best one out there. No. That's got, you know, it might be the best box, but if you don't have the guy. There. I just love how everyone on there just jumps straight on. Just get a Haltech plug-in. That, That's because pe- a lot of people are like me and they don't like wiring. They're well, figuring out how and, to wire. And rightfully so. However, those people aren't asking what gearbox it's got. Because if that's a VR 5 litre... You don't with a f- ask all the questions when you give advice <laughs> on the internet, Jeff. But if it's got just a... Fucking stop it. If it's got you a 4L60... What stall? 
Yeah. This one, bruh, that's all you need. Yeah. 3,500, that's it. But if it's got a 4L60, that plug-in doesn't work with that trans. You know what I mean? you got to go back to a Turbo 700 or a Trimatic or something because it doesn't have any trans control. Yeah. So, I don't know. But that seems to be a, a favorite one on on that crowd. Yeah. yeah. you really got to be careful asking questions on Facebook. Yeah. I'm in a couple of... I'm in all sorts of groups, but more often than not, the people, if they really are clueless and they're in asking questions, you're going out worse than you went in. Yeah. I promise you, you are. More often than not, you need a... Um, yeah. I mean, it's good to get a bit of a gauge. You sort of just need to be able to have enough sense. I've asked heaps of questions on there, but yeah. you sort of need to have enough sense to bit sort of, of know what, who's doing what, yeah. you know. So Yeah, do a bit of research first. Tell you what, once again, we keep saying it, but that's where the forums were king. Hmm. I want to uh, shout out. So in uh, the video of my ute being sold... In our analytics, it sort of tells you where the views are coming from. And I saw on there, third on the list was just Commodore's forums, which I thought was a bit weird. I'm like, why would there be views coming from there? I want to shout out to a long-time viewer, Fu Manchu. You'd have seen his name pop up oh, in yeah, the comments the time. 101 times. Yeah, He went to the effort of creating a thread on just Commodore's to sort of spark a bit of a conversation of people who have either... Um, sold a car to a previous owner or bought their car back and sort of shared um, my story oh. and got a bunch of people sort of watching the video that way. So I want to say mad props to you, Fumantu. Thanks for, one, being a very avid follower and, two, sharing our stuff around so that other people uh, get to watch it. We do appreciate the hell out of that. But, I, um, yeah, I went for a bit of a bit of a wander through the forums just to see what the recent sort of topics and stuff were. It was JC, you said, Just Commodores? Correct, I'd yeah. never spent like any time on there. No. Nah. I didn't like the, I didn't like that one. The really. vibe? No. Nah. Yeah, I wasn't yeah, a mad was, fan of... And It look, wasn't as good as Street Commodores, I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, it might be different now because I mean, who, shit, what else have you got? Yeah, you know what was a good one? Performance Forums was fucking good, eh? Performance Forums was great if... As long as you weren't on the receiving end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you're on the receiving end on performance forums, you were not having a good day. Yeah. But yeah, those dudes knew how to talk shit. Yeah, there was some good stuff in there. Yeah. And some awesome builds. Have you seen, I think there's a performance forums uh, Facebook group I uh, oh, okay. come across the other day. And it's the same sort of shit. They just share a bunch of memes and stuff like that. But every now and again, you get pretty gangster yeah. build or a blast from the past like someone with a car from those days sort of resurfacing yeah i guess um but yeah it was pretty interesting talking about blast from the past from our previous podcast guests the first our first guest did you mm. see the updates on the psycho Ute the daryl's been sharing yes the, the airbrushing progress yeah so they found the original airbrush artist who did it previously um and he's the previous few times yeah guess, yeah you know, yeah and had all the airbrush looks really good eh? it does look great yeah it's um, a lot of work man damn <sighs> right down to the brake discs and shit like <laughs> they might need help <laughs> like professional help yeah man Troy is, uh, he's committed. You can't... I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Like, when it gets In finally gets over here. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be wicked. I wonder when see. it's going to be ready, like... I wonder if we're ready for, like, Motor X next year or something. Yeah, I don't know. There's, oh, look, there's a lot of work ahead of it. Mm -hmm. But, um, as we both know, this shit, this shit takes time. But, um, and particularly in Orange, it's going to be bitterly cold I was there. just thinking that. <laughs> it's getting a bit cold here. I wouldn't even... Wouldn't be venturing out. Oh, it's probably already in the negatives in yeah. Orange at the moment. <laughs> yeah. There's no way I could live there. <laughs> nah, shit, no. No. But nah, it's um, it's going to be awesome when it's done. I'm super... Like, I'm proud of them, you know what I mean, for taking on the project and keeping it as true to the original as what it was um, to, to really bring it back to be exactly how it used to be. Um, it makes me, you know... F feel good about the project inside not that i should give a fuck i've not spent a dime but you know I've, you feel invested when you know the blokes you know what i mean and um yeah i can't wait to see the final result yeah yeah it's gonna be sick mm. 
shenanigans online though, mate. There's been some shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't pro- I haven't even seen the article. Yeah. From uh, you've seen it? I haven't seen like Oh, sorry, I did, did see we, the news article. Did we get article. sent in our socials? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a yeah. I did see like... the news article, but I haven't seen, um, or I might have inadvertently, but I haven't seen the video that sort of was the undoing. Yeah. However, um, a semi-predominant South Australian automotive YouTuber has had their car confiscated. Yeah, which is not a single... There's not one bit of fiber in my body that's surprised about that at all. And I'm not no. happy. I'm not necessarily happy about it or, no. you know, I don't think, you know, I have, I'm neither here nor there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But I'm, I'm certainly not fucking surprised about it at no. all because Getting out you, on... you, you'll be able to tell the people how over the top I am with just sort of on like online security and people knowing yeah. sort of more than what they need to know, especially when it comes to like registration plates and perhaps, you know where you live and stuff like that like i'm yeah. sort of just i try and be fairly vigilant with it because there's no harm in overdoing it no. and underdoing it so but um yeah so you go out and you yeah do some pumpies for dale <laughs> out on, or for no one or for, yeah you're doing some pumpies uh you you're getting into some mischief with the boys on a weekend or whatever and uh it goes up on the Instagram stories. Well, the five or on you just on your channel, yeah, with zero blurring. The five O gets a hold of it. On you know, it's on public roads or whatever. See, this is where the US and us are very different. If you're an overseas listener, I don't think there's many of you, but um, in the US, you've got to be caught in the act to be considered, you know, doing the wrong thing. If they've got video footage or whatever, it sort of doesn't really hold up. In Australia, though, they don't give two fucks about any of that. If they've got video footage of you doing a skid on the street, that is just straight up evidence, admission of guilt, guilty as charged, prove otherwise, I, change my mind. I bet there's people that have been charged with zero evidence. Yeah. Like, no that, that's like, it's, it's pretty shit house, but yeah, that's just how it is over here. It's dog shit. Yeah. But, um,. That car is at risk of being taken away permanently or being crushed. Which and would be a shame. It would be a obviously. super shame. Because it's a super nice car. Even and if the it guys, wasn't, it doesn't. I don't, think, I don't think the government should ever, ever be able to take your property off you and do that, no matter no, what. Like, no matter no. what, I don't think there's any scenario where I think that is... No. Okay. Obviously, there's probably got to be some punishment for doing the wrong thing. But like you say, I don't think they should be taking away your personal property, which you own whole, like outright. This, you know, like that's yours. They shouldn't be taking that away. Fine him, give him community service, give him a suspended sentence, give him, you know, a, a short stint, whatever. No, I, I don't think yeah, that's. No. I don't think that's fair either. I can't like the idea of just getting caught personally. Yeah. But I also. You, yeah, you kind of should know better as well, just for sharing it in general. Yeah. Like, it's different if someone else has filmed you and then they've put it up, well, then it's sort of like bad luck. But when you're just putting everything that you do up for everyone to see, yeah, um, it's you kind of, you've just got to expect it, I guess, is what I... Yeah, like you say, you're, you're super over the top with it. I'm, and I'm uh, certainly not too forthcoming in putting shenanigans up online no, we're not going to do that because no. you know what can happen exactly and it's, it might not it's a, you might get away with it for three or four years yeah that's the thing and then like then one day it catches on or someone sees it yeah and then you're in the shit so you're better off just keeping it to yourself look at the dramas that um your brother troy candy had with the cops over yeah. in melbourne particularly you know because same sort of thing and a lot of the time his shenanigans were on private property or this and that whatever however it was just putting it out there, dangling the carrot and just antagonizing. And even though at the times he wasn't doing anything wrong or whatever, the cops would still be waiting at the gate of his factory where it worked just to just to be a nuisance, yeah. I guess. He, the difference is though, and maybe this fella in SA is the same, like they've built a pretty big brand off of doing that shit. So they've the the amount of um sort of 
even just money directly that would have come from having that sort of stuff out there the followers and everything that comes along with that the audience yeah. the brand your brand uh, you know that's probably gone a fair way for him anyway like he wouldn't change he wouldn't change it no he's had he's had a pretty rough go with the fuzz too so <laughs> yeah but yeah i don't know yeah i think we all sort of know now yeah probably yeah probably. well look if you didn't know if if you're that oblivious just look if you're going to do something silly, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're having a bit of fun with the boys, just keep it to yourselves. You don't have to put it online. I know it seems like a great idea, but it's fucking not. It's not. Because it makes all the rest of us look bad too because the the news, they're not going to get the footage of that charity cruise and, and all the people handing out teddies to homeless people and whatever. They're just going to go straight to old mate doing a skid in an empty industrial park, no doubt, in the middle of the night when there's no one there, but they're going to make out like you nearly hit, you know, a Catholic school bus. That's just how it's going to be. And it makes all the rest of us look bad and not necessarily look bad, but it just draws attention, which is something that we just don't need. So no. Yeah, that, uh, that our numbers would be dwindling as the years go by, for sure. Oh, I think that's possibly a thing anyway. Obviously yeah, that's right. The... Kids would rather drive around in four-cylinder diesel fucking utes now. Yeah, yeah. As sad as that is. It is a sad thing, isn't it? Because even the young fillies out of high school now, a couple of blokes at work, they got teenage daughters or whatever, and um, we're having this discussion because it's just like, all right, so what are the boyfriends bringing around? You know, what are the boyfriends bringing to your place? What sort of hot cars have they got? And they're like, nah, they're all fucking Tritons and, mm. you know, all these. And they're all sort of clapped out because they just want to go through bog holes and jump over dunes and shit like that. There's no clean street cars, which is super disheartening for both him because he's a car guy and he, he wants, he's... Um, you know, he wants to have some interaction with this kid. The other side of that, though, is... What would you rather your kids driving around in, like a hot sedan or like a gutless four-cylinder diesel? Yeah, Because yeah. I had this conversation with one of my friends, Simon, who his young bloke's got like a, a pretty bombed out patrol, like it's got a like, big pump on it, lift and like heaps of stuff. Like it's, all a, fa- it's, all, it's a fairly fruited up um, TD42 GU and it's like... Going in bog holes and doing shit like that is like way more safer than the shit that we used to get up to. Mm. You know what I mean? When we would at their age, 17, 18. Yeah. So I had an, a VT Calais way back, which was an LS1 and had, you know, like all the bolt-on gears and a mathless tune and yada, yada, yada. I sold that car to buy the VSU and I sold it to a young fella who didn't have his license yet. And... um Got his license on a Friday at, on his lunch break from work. He goes back to work. When he's leaving on Friday, I all the boys like, ah, oh, show us what this thing's got. So he's done a dirty power skid out of the industrial park and the cops are at the end doing an RBT. So bang, he's just nailed on the first go. And I saw his parents oh, a couple of weeks after because this thing had a ridiculous stereo in it. It was just a wild setup with, you know, kicker L7 subs and shit that I'd, I'd spent thousands of dollars on. Um, but it blew a fuse or something. So I managed to bump into the father and we're talking about um, the car and how it's going. And he told me about what his son did. And he said, yeah, I'm forcing him to trade it in on a three litre non-turbo Hilux because of exactly that, you know, like what trouble can he get into i felt so bad for the kid eh? but he was just like nah he had his chance i i gave him the benefit of the doubt and i said right oh here's enough work to hang yourself and and sure enough yeah (laughs) one Um, knockoff skid jeez yeah unlucky on a friday arvo unlucky and it wouldn't have been that impressive i mean that thing did a pretty dirty power skid but yeah it it wouldn't have been it was a skid anyway it wouldn't have been worth losing the car over um things that would do big dirty power skids though gtr fest has just finished up there's a couple of impressive numbers that have come out of this as always yeah i haven't um gotten right up on the content it's only monday so most of that stuff's still coming however 
Uh, the Don, overall fastest and quickest on a new combo, 593 at 235 mile an hour with an early shutoff. That's getting it. 235 mile an hour in... You know, we can't call that a street car, I don't think. That'd be yeah, no. that'd be full blown race car, but still Of course it is, yeah. In but it's still a car that looks like a car. You know what I mean? Even if it doesn't, it's still pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But it's that's just the fact that it's a six I think it's going that fast. Super impressive when you can take like a stock body car and make it do that. Um that's super impressive to me you may have mentioned before of uh it was a sylvia wasn't it? it yeah i think that's their a mechanic there or their apprentice or their mechanic at talks i think that's his car sure we just had a bit of a uh, power fluctuation sorry about that let's uh pick up where we left off however so uh s chassis like you're saying an apprentice or something at yeah i think so i think he's a mechanic at Matooks. Mm. i think something like that hitman set a world record making the Quickest and fastest S chassis IRS car on the planet, 6.7 at 218 mile an hour. IRS car going that quick. That must be not yeah. impressed in the Any 60 foot. Car. <laughs> Any car. Yeah. yeah like, could you imagine the suspension working on that in the 60? Holy shit. That'd be hard out. Pretty cool. But um, I'm looking forward to the content coming out for that. Um, there'll be a few I think I saw Nelson's put a video out I haven't had a chance to watch it yet but that is in my notifications um, and yeah there'll be heaps of heavy hitters I think the Crank Motorsports guys they had their 32 there which that's that was the fresh build wasn't it yeah yeah that looks like it's a, a gangster bit of kit there's a lot of really really high end skylines over here yeah gdrs in particular like i think there's always just, you, you see that um when they do the shop tours or whatever mm. content whatever shops putting out or people are visiting it's just like bill of block bill of block bill of block <laughs> fucking promo turbo blah 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 yeah. just just non-stop yeah it's pretty crazy there's always a bit of an argument on who does the better gdrs australia and the us i think we got oh, hands i don't down. think there's any arguments there i think i think that's fairly clear cut yeah with what you've just said yeah. It sort of says it all. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're talking 35 GDR. Yeah, but, but 35s aren't GDRs. No. No, I agree. Yeah. No, <laughs> no one cares. No. no. Okay, that's a lie. People care, but yeah, no, that's not that's not the hotness for, for a lot of folks. No. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Well, unless you got money, because they're expensive. I don't, but I, I, I don't, I don't think any. I don't think they're any more expensive than... Well, building, yeah, building a 32 or something, yeah. Once yeah. you get to that level, they're all on par. Yeah. What do you think would be harder? Um, obviously, I know what would be harder. Building a 32, say, with the billet block and this and that and everything else to make that high horsepower versus buying a 35 and then getting, say, like one of the Alpha um, like A1000 kits or something like that and making the big horsepower, but... What would be like all in cost factor? Because obviously, you've got the cost of buying the vehicle and then doing the mods to get to that stage. Obviously, you've got a higher capital investment buying the, the 35, but then you're probably going to get to that horsepower goal quicker and cheaper. I, mean, I don't know. I don't think we're well versed enough to. To know that, because I know the transmissions are pretty dear. Like, yeah. you just hit hit levels. All your bolt-on and easy, simple stuff, obviously, you're going to get a lot more performance gain out of a newer car that makes mm. more power without fucking with it too much. But once you've got to start building them transmissions yeah. and, and stuff like that, I think it all... Like any platform, it sort of doesn't really matter what you start with. You get to a certain, a certain level of seriousness when you're really getting serious with it and it sort of all seems to start leveling out you yeah know what i mean like it's using um the age-old one that we go by is like with an ls versus a hold once you get to a certain level where it's all aftermarket blocks and mm. and stuff like that yes the holding stuff still probably is going to be a little more but it's definitely not not the same as when you're using factory head castings and factory blocks and yeah. stuff like that it's um 
probably a generational thing, I guess, or just personal preference as well. But you've got some people that just won't want to live with that older car. Yeah, you've got, but you've also got the people that know full well that that 35 is nowhere near as exciting to drive because it'd yeah. be boring. You just get in and it just goes. The number yeah. on the, if you're racing it, the number on the, um, on the, on the board is going to look more impressive, but yeah. the experience is not going to be the same. No. And that's really what cars are all about at the end of the day. It's, the, exp it's the experience, whether you're yeah. driving it, building it, um, you know, seeing other people's reactions to what you've done with it. Yeah. Have that's you, what it's all about. Have you been in a 35 before? No. I've been in one and um, it was mildly modified. I'll tell you what, the, the pickup those things have got, it was... Pretty like it surprised me when when he first got after it on the loud pedal, and I was just like, "Oh, this is actually a bit like I knew it was going to be quick." It's obviously like built to rival supercars, you know what I mean? So I knew it was going to be reasonably good, but um, it was pretty surprising how much low down torque yeah. it had for a three point eight liter, which I guess is still a fairly big capacity for Shit, that yeah. style of mm -hmm. of car. Yeah. Um, but the thing that really impressed me was the rolling anti lag. So you play the steering wheel like a Game Boy and you go fucking R1, R2, left, up, down, square, X, you know, and it unlocks this secret menu and you use the cruise control buttons where you, so we're at Barbagello and we're coming down the hill out to the main straight and you pretty much set the cruise control up at 70 k's an hour and it's just like a rolling anti-lag. As soon as you map that pedal, it was just fucking on. It was... um. To, to have that functionality in sort of a, a stock car, dude, it was cool as shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was, like I say, it's, Same thing, I guess it's it all Game Boy want, stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think I'd want to live with one, um, like, as as my own vehicle, but it was... I only need to hear to one on the chip and I'm like, yeah, that's enough for me. It sounds like yeah. an Ecotec, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know if it doesn't really <laughs> sound like that, but it's still not. I don't really like it either. Yeah. Yeah. They don't sound like an RB. No. That's for sure. Yeah. It's a pretty impressive platform though. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. I'd love to have a have some sort of RB GDR or something one day. That'd be pretty cool. But well, we it's do. not really fully my scene, but yeah, no. they're pretty cool. We've got an RB30 kicking around. We just need everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Literally everything else. Yeah. Maybe one day. That's I don't know if we've even mentioned that before, but we do have an RB30 kick around. Well, mate, with that done, uh, why don't we move on to... <laughs> Under the bridge. <laughs> Under the bridge. We're going to visit the comments section and address... I don't know some people's comments i guess okay <laughs> our boy grim reaper he's back isn't it funny it goes quiet for a while we've got a resident hater i think just about every video we get one thumbs down and i reckon it's him just about every time sell the ute what does he do he's like, bet you only got five grand for a piece of shit he's a holden v8 hater i believe absolutely i reckon he's a, I reckon he's a fucking ecotech guy Possibly. Yeah. He could well be. But, um, yeah, it was funny to see him uh, pop up out of nowhere. He's getting his five minutes of fame now. Well, I've, I'd forgotten all about him, but when I seen, I did see it pop up and I thought, fuck, oh, that's, I'm sure when Cause he very, was... very first started it, like I remember, I can't remember what he said, but I just remember it being a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that being pretty early days. So uh, it was it was funny to see him uh, pop up again. I just replied and I said, "It's good to see you still around, mate." Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. It was too good. Um, I want to go back. I think it was Fu Manchu again. We're going to give him a, a second plug on the potty. He's going to struggle to walk out the front door after this. He um, shared a bit of a story. He said, when the video went up, he said, this is weird. It's such a similar story to when I said goodbye to my VP ute. Almost shed a tear as I left the street and it took us all over WA. Kids came along, the ute no longer easily fit with our needs, so along came the crewman. 
A few days ago, I found in my contacts, bought the ute. I was in his contacts. I'm thinking I want to find out what happened to it. A bit random though. And here you are posting a different version of a very similar story. And I still think about my ute still. I said to him, go on, mate, ring the number and flip us a voicemail with your findings. I don't think we've got a voicemail yet, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. Have you ever, because you sold a couple of cars, you wouldn't have kept in contact with any of the guys that yeah. bought? No. No? No. Once they're gone, they're gone? Yeah. Yeah. See, I haven't yeah, sold I that many. Yeah. No, not really. No. It'd be interesting, though, if you did... Uh, well, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because <laughs> if it is your pride and joy, what happens if it's crashed and burnt and whatever? You know, you probably would you want to know? It's kind of like the Schrodinger's cat deal, isn't it? You don't yeah, know unless you open the box. Most of them would have went through that many more hands after a lot yeah. of the time. Well, I feel like with um, that you'd have ours, I'll call it, um, if you didn't buy it, and then I didn't buy it off you. I guarantee that thing would have been blown up, LS swapped, crashed, thrashed, busted, stolen, whatever. Yeah. You know, it it got pretty lucky to have the life that it had. Yeah, and fairly untouched too, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you capture anything out of the the comments section somewhere? No. Nah. Nothing? There was quite a few comments though. It was really good. Yeah. To see some engagement back. There was some good stories that sort of... Came, I can't pinpoint too many other than that one. Um, There's heaps boy. out there. I mean, but yeah, you could go on all night about it, really. Yeah, just a lot of people who had, um, you know, sold a car or, or got one back after many years, which was really exciting. Yeah. No, I've been getting caught up on the on the feels of it. I've just been like, all right, what are we getting for the VH? Yeah. And what are we doing? We're going air fire. Are you going to do the motor for nitrous now? Are you going to tame it down? You know what I mean? I've just yeah. been asking all those sorts of questions and you've been telling me, shut up. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. So I don't want to get stuck into the engine until last. It only makes sense to me to make the car ready to accept an engine before we even bother looking at it. Because if I blow my wad on getting the engine sorted out, and blow half my available budget that I've got now, then that engine just gets wrapped up in plastic like it is now and sitting for another few years. So it yeah, makes... The more... sucky thing, because you need to get yours like registered and stuff. If it was already registered, it'd be a, probably a bit different story. Possibly, yeah. But because you've got to kind of do some things twice in yeah. order to get it all happening mm, yeah, and registered and stuff like that, you can't do it how you want it the very first time. So. No. But... I am strongly considering the air fire out. I think um, I've got a carby. You've, you've, you've sitting, got um, it's sitting right right there, front and center. I do have a carby for it, which was, you know, custom built to suit the combo. But I don't have any ignition. You've or, caught that. Um, what's the tag that Jeff's been doing? The carb delete. Carb delete. Yeah. Yeah. You've caught that carb delete. Well. Jigger. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to put nitrous on it, it makes sense. Yeah, that's right. I've, and I think that's honestly why it makes more sense if I do want to put nitrous on it. But also, um, if I was to maybe tame the engine down slightly to then be able to run a 98 tune, obviously it'd be like very limited RPM and all sorts of things to run on 98. But then um, switch it on flex to e85 and then spray it with some gas you know to make up the shortfall if i tame the engine down but then i put an extra hundred of spray on it hmm. you know i think the taming it down would be more for the valve train is what my thoughts yeah. were having something that's just not going to be f fucking you know going through lifters like skittles sort of deal yeah. like getting something a new camshaft with a nice uh, uh, yeah with a nice like you know the lobes on that like your your engine's like old right? and it's a race yeah. engine like it was built only to race yeah and it's like old so if you sort of update like you said your camshaft and maybe do a couple of things with the cylinder head yeah um probably still run it on good fuel anyway because you don't really you can't trust pump 98 no. really at no. all and especially not with high compression and stuff like that but yeah something that's just going to be sort of a little more 
nicer mm. for more regular driving. Yeah. So you're not like, oh, no, I don't really want to take that because I'm going to have to do the lifters in another so many kilometers or hours or whatever. Like you want to, yeah. you sort of want to get in and drive it as much as you can. Yeah, particularly. And if you with... want to put nitrous on it, you don't necessarily need to have like a, I'm going to call it a max effort, even though it isn't, but it's still, it's a fairly highly strung engine. If you yeah. are open to the idea of putting nitrous on it, then why not tame it down? You're going to have to soften the, soften the heads up a bit and stuff anyway and then just use the gas to to get you back up to where you need to be to go as fast as you want to go yeah at the racetrack yeah where you'll need a roll cage instantly anyway so like you know what i mean <laughs> well if i'm using the nitrous yeah i'd uh, aspirated i'd like to think it'd run a nine aspirated um on well, the motor you've got now yeah as is i think it would yeah it probably would it probably wouldn't do it straight off the rip no. like we'd have to no, of course not you have to work that out but um yeah, it'd probably do nines aspirated, but yeah, I think eventually I'd like to um, spray enough to run an eight ninety nine, and then just that'll do me. I think for this car, if I want to do something faster, I'll build something else. Um, but this is all bridges that need to be crossed. However, like I say, the engine to me is probably one of the last things um, that I want to sort of spend money on. I'd, I'm going to be thinking about it. I'm going to be planning all the other stuff around it. But as far as actually getting to it, it's going to be the last on the list, unfortunately. Which sucks because it's the more, you know, exciting part. But Yeah, it's the most exciting part. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about race engines. You know what really grinds my gears? Running on the chip. On the chip, powered by our good mates at Reed Speed. If you want to get a sweet accessory drive kit or if you want to maybe show an expression of interest for the new crank trigger kit that's under development for the Holden 5 litre, then head to readspeed.com.au. That's super exciting, isn't it? Of course. The crank trigger kit. We yep. we sort of um, teased the subject a, a long while back and we've been talking with down at reed speed about it sort of on and off for a little while and he's um he started some development and it's looking pretty good isn't it yeah yeah so if you're a, a holden five liter dude and you want to maybe accelerate yourself like say if you're someone that's looking for an efi box or something yeah. or you want to go to some sequential ignition and you know move out of the 1970s yeah, yeah the vt distributor can only sort of get you so far yeah, they have their own sort of problems once you start getting after it RPM wise, but it's always nice to have options there. Yeah, yeah, and like I say, this looks like it's going to be a neat package yeah. too. I sort of want to help maybe get an LS alternator conversion going on as well. Mm. Mm. Seeing step, as step away from the you know the old um, AC Delco bloody eighties bloody shape alternator you know there's yeah. not a shitload of options so we might even look into doing something like that as well yeah doing a bit of development and stuff like that if you guys got something that you guys are really interested in that you'd like to see um look no promises but if uh there's some ideas that make sense out there then it's certainly something we can put forward for sure anyhow on the chip have you got anything that's got you on the chip recently Nah. I've got a weird one. Barber shops. That it's, is a weird one. Yeah. For some reason, over the last couple of weeks, the barber shops got me on the chip. I'm getting sick and tired, and I don't know if this is just where I'm at or if it's everywhere. But you go in and you wait your turn in line for however long. You've got like one qualified barber there and then a whole bunch of apprentices. You get a half-rate haircut from the apprentice that you've got to friggin' touch up when you get home, but you're still getting slugged full book. It's getting beyond a joke. That's probably just you, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know, because it's not like I get a super fancy haircut. There was a time where I did. I used to spend a fair bit of time at the barbers, but, you know, I just don't have the time these days. And plus, who the fuck am I trying to impress anyway? The juice <laughs> just not worth a squeeze anymore, bro. Nah, no, no, no. But, you know, you go in for your haircut and you sit there... And look, I accept that when you go to a barbershop, like a, a traditional style barbershop, you don't book 
you're just going, right, I've got a couple hours this morning, I'm going to go and get my hair cut. And you might be the first in line or you might be waiting a while. That's just how Can it you is. even book a barber shop? I don't think you I don't, can. Yeah, I don't think I don't think barbers. it's a barber shop. I think it's no. a hairdresser once yeah. you... Uh... Men's hairdressers, yeah, that's when yeah. you start booking. But um, like I say, you end up... You might need to switch it up, bro. It might be time. Mm. It might be time. Or I might just fucking buzz do cut. Do you think... Do you think they've looked at it and gone, I'm just going to... Like, you know, when you take like a rough car in and you just need like a panel touched up and they just haven't given it the same effort they would on a like a brand new Mercedes or something. Do you reckon they're just stiffing you that way? Maybe you weren't, oh. maybe you weren't her style or, or his sort of... So you maybe, know what I mean? Like, I'm not... Look, I'm not saying that's the case. But maybe I should have like take an extra five minutes in the shower and <laughs> like just I don't know, man, get myself but, smelling nice. I don't know. That could be. Well, I'm kind of going there so that they they do me yeah. right, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm getting docked. Yeah. But like I say, it's, I don't know. It must just be a business model for the local area. Mm. It's like, right, we're going to open up the shop. We've got one qualified barber and then we've got five apprentices. So then we don't have to pay fuck all on wages, but we can still slug you 50 bucks for a haircut. Mm. Yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know, you just get that sometimes, don't you? Yeah. Some Australian businesses, like Australians in general, are kind of, you get what you get. Yeah. Don't you? And you don't get upset. Well, you do. You get on your podcast well, and you, you get can, upset. Yeah. <laughs> just start blasting them. Yeah, I've been waiting for waiting for an invoice for a friggin' transmission for the latest project and I've had to wait over a week and yeah. I've tried calling... And it's a really, really, really nice transmission. It is. It is. I thought they would have tried to sell us one by now. Yeah. And but, it's like, so it's a, it's a be... month's wages for some people. It's, it's not like it's chump uh, change. It's more than that. Yeah, but, you know, like it's it's a sizable sale. You'd think that if yeah, they like wanted Yeah, like I said, it's just a real nice 400, so. Yeah. Try to call them again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's just crazy sometimes you need to. And there's, I've emailed other shops. I emailed three three different places arguably one of the best places in australia that's what i'm talking about and then there was another another two and one was sort of more local in this state i still haven't got a response from those guys i guess maybe they want to be called up but even then i find the email thing at least for an initial thing you can get to it in yeah. your own time it's all in writing so you're not missing out details like especially like a transmission build yeah. or an engine build you want you need it all in writing and, you you know, that way you can, both parties can digest it more. But not only that, like if I was a, say if I was a, a machinist or an engine builder or a trans builder or whatever, I wouldn't want to be sitting on the phone all day. You get fuck all done. I so understand like, that they don't want to be like doing that detailed quotes over email all the time either. So I do get mm, that, but, you know, yeah, we're literally at invoicing stage and it's gone cold. So who knows? Yeah. But yeah. Once again, heaps of stuff, heaps of stuff to manage. Yeah. Once again, we get to highlight that the service uh, industries in Australia are lacking. But lucky you do get good products most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. Yep. And everyone's busy and a lot of them are small and you only got so many people. I you- think that's what a lot of people probably struggle to realize is that some of these high profile workshops, whether, you know, tuning or car building or whatever a lot of them are like maybe not one man bands but there's only a couple of people working there it's not like you've got a, a massive factory with 20 people running around it's not like a beehive that's no, it's never going to be like that because no. the skill sets you need to do a lot of the stuff that people want done and the quality control half of those guys are going to do their own shop yeah and, and make the money you know so yeah that's why it is like that. You need to find the right people. Yeah. Which hopefully we can get the right people on board oh, if they get back to us. we definitely got the right people on board for sure. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So you got nothing to go- get you on the chip other, nah, than, other than my barber shop? No. Nah. Right. We'll move on then. Hello. Blow wine. Our favourite segment now. I was a little bit slack on it uh, this month with reminding you guys to get your voicemails in. However, if you do have a voicemail, you can go to our website, talkhub.com.au at any time. There's a red button on the right-hand side where you can send us a voicemail. 
or periodically I'll post it on our Instagram stories, which yesterday I fucked up, Kurdo. It I'm happens. A, it does, it does. But I put a, I made a typo. So I put a link in the Instagram story so that people could just make it nice and easy for them, you know. Just press the button, leave us a voicemail. Um, but I put a typo in the address. So if you click the link, it went to nowhere. <laughs> Shipload. That's my, that'd be my move. Yeah, absolutely. But um, no, nah, we, we managed to get one voicemail in, which, uh, you yeah. know. It's better than nothing. You're out right there with your headphones. Yeah. Just need to push it in. It's all good. Right on. Let's go. Good day, fellas. Just following in about the new taxes fee pass that starts from July next year. Now yeah, about meeting the emissions yeah, each year for now or from then until 2029, yeah, bringing the CO2, which is basically about half of what they put out now, where a lot of cars, even on Hilux, don't even meet it now. So it's interesting to see what the future is going to be because instead of you know, us getting more and more powerful cars that we used to, you know, more power out of them, we're now going to be getting cars as small as smaller engines to try and meet these, you know, ridiculous lines that don't don't change anything about emissions. We, we both know that. So it's interesting to see what you guys think about, you know, what, what the future is going to be because basically it's like, you know, we're basically pushing the EV and hybrid agenda more and more on the people that, you know, a market that isn't really interested. You know, thanks, guys. Yeah, taxes will fix everything. Just put another tax in, mate. Yeah. <laughs> i got to be careful because I don't. No, you don't. I reckon we just fucking let them have it. Yeah. They want to cut down on all this CO2. You know what the carbon they want to dr- reduce? Me and you, mate. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. CO2, plant food. Exactly. Yeah, you get rid look, of the man. CO2. CO2 is creating global warming this and that okay yeah right, let's let's say for a moment that global warming is a real thing because look it's I'm, not i'm it's not, not i'm not a scientist so i'm not gonna cast a definitive judgment i have my opinion obviously um but co2 let's say we get it down to a level that they want the earth is not gonna survive very well without it they'll never get it down to where trees need co2 they literally you taught that in primary school you breathe carbon dioxide out the trees take that in and they give you oxygen back you know that you're never going to be able to reduce it to a point that's going to make any difference it's like fractions yeah that they try where where it matters it's you know in our pockets yeah that's just like another creative way to to take more money out of your pocket more yeah. or less and just make it harder to just harder for everything yeah it's, and look uh, yeah i don't know we i'm certainly I mean, not ag- yeah. i'm certainly not against um you know being less wasteful as human beings you know what i mean like and just we can definitely get better taking better care of the environment that we have um i think there's definitely ways that we can move forward there however i feel like the agendas that are being pushed and the the opinions and the targets and mm. all this sort of shit it's i don't feel there's like an it's an ulterior motive and yeah. it's not a greener planet that's for sure no. in my opinion anyway no i don't feel like it's going to make the difference that people think it will um it's it'll it's make a, a difference but it won't be yeah it's the sad reality. And yeah. why is it that um, you've got these, what are they, committees, I guess. You've got these governing bodies who are self-elected or whatever that are really putting the pressure on Australia of all places to clamp down on certain things when percentage-wise we contribute next to nothing as far as greenhouse gases yeah. and things like it's, that. Yeah, I said it's got nothing really to do with that. No. It's just about the boot. It's about the boot on the neck and us as Australians in general just cop it. Like we're just yeah. too worried about the footy or whatever. Whatever's going on. No shade on anyone who likes football. But yeah, just yeah. As, a, as a general culture, no one's really interested in politics. Myself sort of included really because I don't believe a single word that any of them say. So. No. And um, we get screwed over with the whole bipartisan um, voting Oh yeah, the whole thing that the we've whole got, lots. You I know, mean, like if you if you if your life's gotten better over the last decade, good for you. Yeah. Because uh, I don't I don't know anyone that their standard of living's gotten any better 
at any time in the last recent history. No. It's just getting worse and worse mm-hmm. and worse. But what I'm saying is even, say, if you were interested in politics and you you felt like your opinion was going to make a difference, even if you went in to the voting polls and you made a very conscious vote, it's not necessarily going to do what you think it does because of this bipartisan system that we've got. It just, I don't know, we've tried to avoid politics as much as possible, but I feel like at the moment, screw it. Like, yeah, I, I personally don't think that any move that we're making in the automotive industry is is the right one it all went very very wrong when we stopped supporting our own domestic market um we've still got taxes that were put in place to protect our local domestic market that that's been gone for many years yet those taxes are still here you know what i mean like why it's just to make life harder for all of us. For every dollar that you make, you pay tax on the fuel in your car, you pay tax on the food in your cupboard, you pay tax on literally everything. You, you've you got mm, tiny amounts for every dollar that you make and you work hard for. Yeah. It's fucked. Yeah, it's by design for sure. Yeah. yeah it's just that, that it's hit peak. Well, not peak, it'll get worse, but yeah, yeah, it's just, it's beyond a joke now. I don't know how a lot of people are surviving, honestly, like... Oh, no shit, like, you and I are quite fortunate um, to to have pretty solid jobs and earn a very modest income for what we do. Um, obviously, we make sacrifices by way of shift work and, and whatnot, and you've got a pretty specialised, or we've both got quite specialised um, skill sets for our own industries, um, but... We're certainly, I've, I mean, I've never earned more money, mm. but I've never felt so, like, yeah. not poor. I'm not going to say I feel poor, no, no. but I definitely, it's not going as far. I definitely feel like my lifestyle has been affected mm-hmm. over the last couple of years, yeah. for sure. Obviously, inflation's doing its thing, but yeah. just, yeah. That um, new tax. Yeah, that I, I didn't out, even know about that because I don't watch. The, I mean, I'm sure that was on the. On the TV, I haven't watched that yeah. garbage in over ten years. Yeah, um, but it doesn't surprise me one bit. But it's like you said, they're gonna tax them if. Like, do you? They're probably the most commonly sold vehicle as well. Like, yeah. it's just a, it's like they've just gone. Oh yeah, this is gonna just hit like the most amount of people for the least amount of effort, and yeah. we're gonna sell it to you. But it's for your own good. Yeah, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. When. Just like you said, there's obviously the push for the hybrid and the um, the the green energy market, which but is our, the, which is really not that green, no, at all. No, that's right. But even like our infrastructure's not ready to support it. Yeah, these guys are like in our locality are like planning on shutting down power stations, and there's no real good solid solutions there to replace it no. with the with the other energy that they're doing. They're doing stuff. It's just not going to be as reliable. No. And it's going to cost us a lot more. I mean, shit, we well, we had one power fluctuation just in this podcast, but where we live, we get power surges regularly. Yeah, it's going to get really bad. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. No, I just, I just don't see the sense. Like, that's... Make it make sense. If you can make it make sense to me, like, I'm fairly open-minded. I can... I can sort of take in whether whether i'm for it or against it it doesn't really matter i can if you can make it make sense to me that is what's important but nothing that i've heard so far really makes tangible sense and obviously people will be like oh yeah but you got a confirmation bias because you've got your own opinion and and what you search online shows this and that and whatever else but that's what makes sense you know what i mean yeah, that hasn't worked this far. No. Yeah, I mean, it's just another another money grab, really, at the end of the day. And, yeah, without going too crazy into it, mm. it's just, um, it's disappointing, for sure. But, yeah. at, like I said, at the end of the day, like, we all as a nation sort of just sit back and cop it and we have done and say, why, why, why they continue to get away with it? Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Why wouldn't they put 
our money in their in their pockets or their their friends fat cats pockets you know like yeah these are all backhand deals yeah that that we don't benefit from no and the positive thing though is i think the hydrogen thing is just getting it's some information's getting to the point where it's unavoidable you know you can't you know the truth will always sort of come out in the end yeah and I, i'm seeing a lot of sort of hydrogen bits and pieces and the main reason i say it is because i've um i follow jake bain on facebook if you haven't followed him you probably should yeah he's great and he does some legendary work as well just like in his own uh profession he's a, yeah 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 he's a re- super super smart guy yeah um but yeah, he's always sharing different bits and pieces about hydrogen. He's, he knows a lot about it. I don't know anything about it, but I do know that it's probably a lot greener than some of the other pathways that they, they're sort of pushing for. Yeah. Um, I did see that there was something, I think, in California. Uh, they've pulled five hydrogen stations. Um, like, they've just closed them. So I don't know what... Obviously, California is probably one of the biggest shitholes in America. <laughs> yeah. Like, whatever they're doing, probably do the opposite, and you'll probably you do a lot better. Yeah, there's a reason why people are moving out of there in droves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, mm. but now thanks for calling in. But yeah, it's pretty shitty. Yeah, and um, I don't. Yeah, I don't see how it's gonna benefit. Um, well, other, it than, other, other than less utes being sold and, you know, how does that help well, us? Well, that's not really... I mean, people are still going to need to buy cars and use cars and so all, all it means is going to have... If there's a tax, you're just going to have less more, less available money or you're going to have to work more. Mm. And we're already working way too much as it is. And yeah. while, you're, while you're working, um, you don't really have time to sit back and look around and think, what the fuck are these guys really doing like the big picture we don't yeah. we're all too busy putting out our own fires in day-to-day life to really sit back and see what's really going on and yeah. like you said the quality of life's just it's definitely not going in the trajectory that i wish it was no no for sure and regardless of you know what what your opinion is on on the political state it's important to remember that we elect these people to work for us. Mm. Um, so it's probably up to us to hold them accountable. Well, not probably. It definitely is up to us to hold them accountable and sort of act on our wishes of as a collective rather than just their own, which I feel is, once again, because we've got such a laid-back society, we just go, ah, it's all right, they can take care of it because I'm not interested. Yeah, but perfect. They it's, love that. It's getting to a point where it's like, hang on a minute. Yeah. You know, we've, yeah, the last few years, I'm sure, have opened up a lot of people's eyes Yeah, as to sort of, you know, what's yeah. going on. Once again, I'm a fairly, I feel like I'm a fairly open-minded person and, and I know you are too. We're both very pro-choice in in everything so it's like if you don't have to agree with our opinion and if you've got your own and that's what's going to work for you then great but you just got to make it make sense for me like there's yeah if it doesn't make sense then i'm not gonna (laughs) not well you're not gonna think it's a good idea anyway no yeah that's right all righty this is um probably a bit of a short and sharp potty because we in all honesty, we weren't very well prepared for it. Yeah. But there was a couple of topics to uh, to cover and it is getting to the end of the month. So that's where we're at. Yeah, definitely try and make better use. I've only got three and a half days off this week or four really. Yeah. I still call it three and a half. Yeah. So um, yeah, make use of our time as good as we can. I've got like so much work to do Yeah. on on the Malou, it's the list just gets longer and longer and longer so yeah and i've got probably 80 gigabyte of footage to go yeah, through yeah yeah kurdo has been it's not good it's honestly not good <laughs> i don't think the first vif- all i've done is what, like best case scenario for what i've done is i've picked the camera up when i've done something but the, because everything has chopped and changed so much there's been one particular sort of pivotal moment in this project when we yeah. sort of were buying parts and we had a fairly clear idea of what was going on um you know we've got roll cages for this and that and then all of a sudden we've 
sort of thrown around some some um i guess horsepower figures and stuff and just sort of went with it and then um that sort of changed the course of everything and now i'm at the point where i'm trying to find the the, the good base ground to to build from yeah without shooting shooting ourselves in the foot later on when it comes to the potential of, of what we've got so yeah so basically my task over the next couple of days is to go through all the footage that's been captured and then figure out what it is that we can even use because a lot of it doesn't even apply anymore and doesn't make sense because a lot of that work has to be redone. Yeah, which I think <laughs> you'll probably still use it. It'll just be how you package it into videos and where you cut it and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's all right. I mean, it doesn't have to... We don't have to do like videos where it's like we did this task and we got it done start to finish this is going to be more of just a yeah this is what we're working on and this is the the journey of how it's gone so far yeah but it just hasn't helped because you haven't been there so and i've just jumped from tart like i'm sort of just jumping wherever there's a bit of work in front of me yeah and um yeah it's so as far as like flow for, for for the video creation it's been a bit shitty which is it's low on the priority list really at the yeah. end of the day yeah it, it'll be what it what it is the video is the byproduct of the work not the other way around the yeah. work isn't the byproduct of the video so but yeah. yeah when k fizzy has been left unattended sometimes things go a little bit a little bit well, it just makes it hard for you for when you try and mm. glue, it, glue it all together yeah i'm capturing most of the stuff that i'm yeah. doing so like that's the main thing but that also doesn't necessarily make for good video either of me dribbling shit for five minutes <laughs> and then um you know time lapsey stuff you know like that yeah. that makes for a shitty video it's good to have the vibe going in the shed you know where they're talking shit whatever you know yeah. so um but i'm i'm back baby i'm finished with my you holiday say that anyway you say that yeah. oh, when 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 you're there i'll believe it because yeah You've been gone a long time. <laughs> you're feeling yeah, feeling you've abandoned. Yeah, you just left me alone. Lucky I got that three-footed monster and the new camera. Otherwise, phew, yeah, that's you'd, right. You'd turn it on and there'd be like no files in there. You yeah, know. see, I treated you to something nice. <laughs> I treated you to something nice. Be yeah. appreciative. Yeah, so I don't know how we're going to do the video yet. And I don't yeah. want to like spoil every single thing on no. here either. So, But just, just be sure to know that this is by far the most exciting project we've ever... I've ever done sort of yeah. been involved with and probably just in a general sense for what what sort of videos we do and others like us it's as far as what the caliber of the car is and how it's going to how it's going to turn out it's going to be that's uh it's going to be extraordinary but that won't necessarily mm. mean it'll do great as, video wise like whenever yeah. we think a cool something really cool <laughs> is on a video it usually it usually flops so yeah but it doesn't matter no but you're dead right as far as a, a car that's being mm assembled by two backyard hacks this is by far the most ambitious project that we've taken on and that we're likely to have in the near future it's yeah. um it's exciting backyard as hacks a bit rough though as well i reckon yeah yeah maybe yeah i don't know some i'm not gonna wear that one anyway <laughs> <laughs> well all right one backyard hack <laughs> and, a fab he, and a fabric up, he hasn't yet but oh listen but no, we have got some really good people on board for it as well. Um, Helping out because, yeah, we need all the... It's the advice and direction. Yeah. It's important. And hopefully um, with those people and their advice, we might be able to get a couple of guests on the potty as well so we can bring some of that conversation to the table for you guys. That'd be good. Wrap it up, baby. That was a good one. That was a good one. A bit long. A bit nah. dribbly, but thanks for listening anyway. As per usual, um, we do enjoy we do enjoy sitting down doing this, yeah. And we always enjoy the, you know, the interaction with you guys after you've listened to this. Um, hopefully, we get some more comments through next week on the on the website. If you've got some topics, send them through now. Once you've listened to this, get off here, get on the website www.talkhub.com.au. Leave us a message if you're feeling really froggy. Uh, you can get yourself some merch. We've we've got uh, jumpers, shirts, hats stickers all that cool stuff i want to maybe get our pick your poison on a black shirt and hoodie we should mm. probably really just organize that like now that'd be like a good easy one that we can stock up yep. we'll let you guys know when uh, when that's all happening that'll be a good one yep and um yeah as always thanks for listening thanks for the support 
Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.